Hi, I'm Mark Wing Davy. I'm the director of School for Wives. Of course, it was written by Molière uh, in the 17th century, but I've kind of replaced it in kind of the late 50s, early 60s in a provincial town in northern France. It so happens that I have a house in the north of France, in, um, in Picardy, Picardy. Um, and when I was thinking about this play, uh, there were certain areas which I kind of thought, oh, this is interesting. They refer to, for instance, the building being that red house. Um, and there happens to be a kind of seaside resort near where I live um, called Le Crotois. And there is a particular two-towered uh, red house, which in fact is now a hotel called Les Tourelles. And um, we sort of used that as our inspiration for the house itself, which has a kind of tower in it. It was wonderful working with Dave Gallo, who's a, a spectacular designer. And what we came to eventually was that the, um, the house itself would be on a kind of revolve, a kind of what's called a donut revolve. Um, and that this kind of tower, as it were, it's a sexy play, okay? It's about um, an older man who um, has brought up this, this uh, woman who is gonna be his wife. And he's trained her in ignorance, and that's kind of the struggle. Um, but as part of it, we played with the idea of training, training nature. And so, because there are these little hedges and a kind of, forgive me, pubic triangle of grass, um, and there are espalier uh, trees up against the garden wall. So espalier trees are trees which are trained. Uh, the French are particularly um, good at it. Uh, and the, and the, uh, the building itself has a kind of phallic quality uh, without overstating it. So those elements of kind of training and compulsion and uh, the way that our psyche, if you like, affects what it is that we produce in the outside world, those are all kind of ingredients within the production. Emily Rebholtz, uh, with whom I have worked actually and uh, very much like working with, um, we looked at um, Godard, Jean-Luc Godard, um, and so we looked at that kind of shift from 50s to 60s, um, but we also looked at some kind of pre-war images from Cartier-Bresson, for instance, the photographer. Um, we'd look at, for instance, um, post-war French convent school uh, uniforms, um, because Agnès, the, the, the girl, has been brought up it by nuns. And then we looked at uh, pre-war costumes for the more respectable folks, and then that kind of shift into the Jean-Paul Belmondo. I wanted it to feel French, particularly, rather than, let's say, American. But I, I may as well talk about this. The reason for changing the period is so that you're not right up to the modern day with it, but you are sufficiently close that you can recognize triggers and signals which clothes can give. Whereas if the whole thing was set in uh, Molière's time, it's much harder to get social cues from the, the, the material, etc., that we have because we're not so familiar with it. So the performances start uh, September 13th. And um, I know that we're all rather excited to see you all here. Just, you know, just one house at a time. Um, and uh, salut. Here we go. This is my kind of rudimentary French. Donc, uh, uh, je serai très content de, de vous voir tout parce que uh, les, uh, les représentations, quoi, uh, ils commencent uh, septembre le 19. Et uh, on, on vous attend. Très bien. Au revoir.